Is Fubo TV a good investment? Let's run through the bull and bear case to find out. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. We recently did an hour long deep dive into Fubo TV and we took it through our checklists. Here's what we found out. Brian, for those that don't know, what does Fubo TV do? Fubo basically takes cable and brings it to the cloud and streaming, except that they have a sports first, live first focus. They also have news and entertainment, but that focus on sports and live entertainment or live activities is the key differentiator for Fubo. Once you get onto their platform, they actually try to sell you other ancillary services on top of that. For example, cloud DVR storage. You can pay actually to have family sharing capabilities, to have unlimited screens. And you can also add on other services like Showtime, Stars, or even Epics. The growth has been tremendous. We're talking triple digit growth year over year fairly consistently, but it's important to point out that as recently as two years ago, there were only 194,000 subscribers to Fubo TV. That is not many at all. Now, currently it's touching about 700,000 and the company thinks they're gonna be knocking on the doorstep of roughly a million subscribers by the end of the year. So it's fast growth off of a small base. And if it can continue, it could mean great things for the company and shareholders. So what's the bull case for investors moving forward? Well, first off, their hyper-focus on live and sports, I really think helps to separate them apart. It's no secret that people have been switching away from broadcast TV in favor of streaming TV. But the one thing that keeps people like me watching live TV is sports. And Fubo's exclusive focus on that might give them an edge in this market. Two, the company has been in hyper growth mode. I mean, triple digit top line growth. And even today, they still have less than a million subscribers. They have global ambitions and there are a lot of rabid sports fans out there. Three, they recently entered the sports betting market. They've gotten regulatory approval in several US states and more on the way. This is an ancillary product that they could offer that could open up new revenue streams and change the company's margin profile dramatically for the better. But there are some very serious risks that we need to know about. The first and most important is the existential risk of saying, where's the moat? The company right now, most of the money that it collects, it has to turn over right away to the providers of the content that it's offering on its service. That's not a sustainable business model, especially when most of those content providers have non-exclusive agreements with the company. So we're gonna need to see some evidence that there's a moat here. Also related to that, we have to wonder, well, how how sticky is this? Because this is an expensive service. Most streaming services will run you between ten and twenty dollars per month. This is between seventy and eighty dollars per month. The company does not provide churn rates that we could find, and it stands to reason that if, say, you're an NFL fan, you'll get the service in September, cancel at the end of February, and wait to re up until the next September. If that happens, that's not great news for the company or its shareholders. And third. The company is burning through cash right now. That's no surprise given the dynamics that I just described. If this continues, and it looks like it will, they're gonna have to raise funds via a secondary offering. And if and when that happens, current shareholders are going to be diluted. So how did this company score when we took it through our investing frameworks? For me, it got a 59, which is well below my investable and why bother category. That doesn't necessarily mean this is going to be a bad investment. My investing checklist is designed to, to find high growth, low risk stocks. There's no doubt this is a high growth stock, but I think it's also a high risk stock. And when you look at my framework, it got a six and a half, which is right on the edge of almost being investable actually, which is kind of surprising because my gut feeling after running through this is that this is a very fragile company at this point without the scale necessary to be able to negotiate better terms with these content providers or those other products that you were talking about. I just don't see myself being that interested in this as an investment. Yeah, it's at a really precarious point in its growth phase right now, where it's in the very high risk stage. Now, over time, if the company can scale successfully and get the sports betting to work, the score on my sheet could improve dramatically. However, right now, it's just too high risk. But what should investors watch moving forward? Well, first off is just the growth. This is a top line growth story. And the only thing that matters now is revenue and subscribers. Those two numbers better scream higher for the next couple of years for this investment to work out. 
Two is the company's foray into the sports betting. That is a massive opportunity for this company, but there's no guarantee that it's going to make it work successfully. And three, can they improve the margin profile of the business? Right now, their gross margin is extremely slim. And as Brian said, most of the company's revenue is passed along to those content providers. Over time, we want to see those ancillary service kick in and that sports betting to dramatically improve the company's margin profile. Yeah, overall, this is a company that I think is interesting. They have a product that I'm personally curious about potentially buying myself, but as an investment, I just don't see myself making a foray into this direction right now. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, right now, this is just too high risk for, for my taste. That doesn't mean it's not going to work out. I would just want to see a couple more years of progress here and much feel much more comfortable at the company's long-term potential to generate meaningful profits before I dove in. Well, thanks for watching. Let us know what you think of Fubo TV in the comment section below. My name is Brian Feraldi, and my mission is to spread financial wellness. And my name is Brian Stoffel, and my mission is to publish the rules of finance for anyone to see. Brian's out.